Hi everyone, thanks for listening to my presentations. Today I'll be talking about ACTA stimulation test and that will form part 4 of 7 when it comes to adrenal insufficiency. To those who are familiar with ACTA stimulation test, this is the first test to embark upon when it comes to adrenal insufficiency. We'll have more tests later on when it comes to full diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency. With that, let's go. ACTH stimulation test. If adrenal insufficiency is suspected or we are querying Addisonian crisis, you know there will be differential diagnosis, right? Then we embark on ACTA stimulation test to be sure we are dealing with adrenal insufficiency or not. ACTH normal level is between 6 and 48 picogram per mil. We have to rule out certain things like run tube. And the reason is the corrective to be used should be plastic. Wrong timing because between 6 and 8 a.m. will be the better time. But if the patient is critically ill, we can take the sample at any time. Okay, we have to check out for obvious triggers. Any of those triggers of Addisonian crisis, like history of head trauma in this patient, stress, amphetamines, alcohol, nearly damaged pituitary, and the effects of Cushing syndrome and exogenous steroid intake, we have to you know, take history around all this before we start you know, the procedure. The agent here is adenocorticotrophic hormone or cortrosine. Adenocorticotrophic hormone at 250 microgram should be given intravenously and should be given at the rate of 4 microgram per hour infusion for 6 hours. How do we come about primary adrenal insufficiency? Normally, ACTH is affected negatively, I mean negative feedback, by high level of cortisol. But in primary adrenal insufficiency, we will not have high level of cortisol. So, there will be no negative feedback on ACTH production. Hence, ACTH level will increase while the level of cortisol will be low. Therefore, Addison's disease will have decreased cortisol level and increased corticotropin, that is, increased ACTH. In secondary adrenal insufficiency, the pituitary is under insult at that level, which decreased ACTH production and reduce impulse to the adrenal gland. Hence, there will be decreased cortisol production. In tertiary adrenal insufficiency, hypothalamus is under insult. Therefore, there will be low level of CRA, that is corticotropin releasing no more. And that will have effect on the level of ACTH that will be low at the level of the pituitary gland. And later on, there will be low level of cortisol at the level of the adrenal gland. In hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, we can test the function of adrenal gland effectively using the ACTH stimulation test. And the procedure will go as follows. There should be overnight fasting in the person that will be tested. Nothing per hour after 12 midnight. Then we will take a sample before we start the test. That will be pre test cortisol level. It should be taken between 6 and 8 a.m. But we can take that 
retest cortisol level at any time if the patient is critically ill. Okay, after taking the pretest cortisol level between 6 and 8 a.m. in many people and at any time in critically ill patients, then we'll give the synthetic SCTH at 250 microgram intravenously or intramuscularly. We'll then take the sample again after 30 minutes and we'll take the second sample after 16 minutes. The results that will be expected will be if ACTH was given intravenously, we will expect about 18 micrograms to 25 micrograms per DL rise in cortisol level. Or if the ACTH has been administered via intramuscular route, we'll be expecting about 16 micrograms per DL rise in cortisol level. If you are able to get those parameters, then we'll consider cortisol level to have increased appreciably. Below the above level is adrenal failure. Interpretation. Any increase from 196 nanomole per liter and above over the pretest value means that the problem is not within the adrenal gland. In other words, it is not a primary adrenal insufficiency. But if we have a weak or very low response, that could be appropriately interpreted with other tests like renin, adosterone, electrolytes, and glucose. Okay, if the insult of the pituitary is acute, and you have a CTA simulation test, and you have the normal response, that is raising cortisol level, then we have to rule out adrenal failure, okay? If the insult of the pituitary is acute, e.g. air trauma or pituitary apoplasy, which means acute central adrenal failure, the response to STA stimulation may be increased cortisol level at that moment. After a while, the cortisol level will drop. Okay, if the insult to the pituitary is still acute, the reason for the possibility of making the wrong diagnosis that the problem is not primary adrenal failure is because the problem is still sudden to the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland has not yet atrophied. So we are still dealing with normal adrenal gland anatomy and physiology. Remember, it's still acute. So we will get the good response because we have adrenal reserve that has matched the expected unresponsiveness to ACTH. Finally, the normal response is increased cortisol up to and greater than 18 microgram per deal. And lack of this means low adrenal reserve. It is not diagnosing primary or central adrenal insufficiency. If you are still suspecting adrenal insufficiency, but your ACTA simulation test is indicating a rise in cortisol level up to 18 to 25 microgram per DL per IV root or 16 microgram per DL per IM root, then you have to go a step further. Then what? Check your corticotropin releasing hormone. Why that? To find out if the problem is with the hypothalamus. The reason is that if the problem is with the hypothalamus and you have not introduced isogenous ACTH, 
they have the adrenaline sufficiency. But if you have introduced esogenous ACTH and there is no problem with the adrenal gland itself, you have a good response. So it could you know, be the case. So by the time you check your CRH, and the value will indicate that the problem is at the level of hypothalamus or not. Okay? With that, I've come to the end of ACTA stimulation test. But that is not the end of diagnostic procedures in the face of adrenal insufficiency. There will be more about diagnosis in the next presentation. And at that level, we'll be able to get to the specific cause or causes. Thanks for listening to my presentation. Please kindly remember to subscribe and share this presentation. I appreciate it.